I am so close to being done. So I did say I was going to film myself like knitting some of the sleeve, but I ended up just not really being in the mood and was just, I very much have reached a point which I'm not happy about, uh, where I just want it done and I just want it done. <laughs> I don't like knitting like that. I like knitting for the process, but you can probably see with how I'm working, I am on the ribbing and this is for the second sleeve. So I thought this was the time to take it slow, check in again, talk a bit about how the sleeves have gone and just enjoy the last few rounds of knitting before the whole thing's done and needs, you know, ends woven in and needs blocking. The sleeves went quite well. They are quite fitted. So it got really hard. So I was using my Chowgu needles because that's what I've been enjoying when knitting sleeves actually working properly in the round like that where I don't have to, you know, obviously this is also working in the round with DPNs, but with circular needles, short ones, you can literally just go, go, go. Occasionally you obviously have to either spin the jumper or kind of like rotate the work back. Pardon me. Um, because as you're working in the round, you're twisting everything. This is normally why I like doing sleeves before the body, because there's just less bulk. And then when I work the body, as I'm going around that, you can just tuck the sleeves into the jumper and then everything just spins around a bit easier. But because the sleeves are quite fitted, it means I really couldn't use my shortest cable for that long because what's the shortest cable that I have? Is it eight inches? I think it might be eight inches. And then I've got the four inch needles. So that means 16 inches in total. So I managed to do how many repeats of the decreases? Maybe four. So like eight stitches in total. And then I had to switch to magic loop. So that's how I did the first one. But, and then I switched to the ribbing needles to do the ribbing on the first sleeve. But now at the second sleeve, as I was working the decreases and I was like, cool, let's move to magic loop, which I don't mind. I've gotten much better at it and I definitely find it more enjoyable to do magic loop than typically working with DPNs. But I found it depends on the wool. It depends on what size needles I'm using. And I kind of just felt the need with this to move to DPNs. I thought it would be easier because I think with Magic Loop, I prefer it at the beginning of the sleeve where you've got more stitches, because then you can really just work across half of them, switch to the next needle. But when you haven't got that many stitches, and I don't really have that many stitches for the cuff here, then it's just constant turning um, and you're not really working for that long anymore. So then I start to prefer DPNs because I also find it easier to then rotate everything because you haven't got that cable to worry about. But I was like, well, when I was doing the second one, I was like, well, I wish I could switch to DPNs, but you know, I don't have 3.75 millimeter DPNs. And then I was kind of just like lying a bit on the sofa. So I normally knit like this, but I was actually kind of knitting, leaning against this armrest here. So I can kind of just look outside and it's not a great day, but it is bright, which is nice. And then I looked and I saw in one of my baskets, my liquor needle set that I talked about in a podcast episode. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm pretty sure they only go up to a 3.5 millimeter. No way would they go up to a 3.75. And I was like, let's just check. And then saw I had 3.75. I knew I didn't have Knit Pro 3.75, so I just assumed I didn't have 3.75 DPNs because I keep forgetting I have other needles other than Knit Pro now. But so I did how much? I think from like here, I've done all of this on DPNs. 
and I just switched to the smaller ones for the ribbing and got a couple of inches of the ribbing to do. I just need to count at some point how many rows I did on the other sleeve. So you can probably see I put these pins in, uh, markers in, so I've already taken some of these out and some of these out and every time I do a decrease I put one in just so I can check how many of them I've done and don't have to count my stitches all the time and then after with this first one that I did I just knitted until it was the correct length that I needed once again I had to add length I've got long arms um, so I think the last decrease was here and then knitted extra before starting the cuff and so every 10 stitches I've then put another one in and then it just makes it easier with the second sleeve but so I still need to count how many rows of ribbing I've done on that other sleeve but I've still got a while to go anyway so visually I know I'm, I'm close to an inch now but I need more than that oh, we're getting there and like I mentioned I was definitely sort of trying to rush through this my plan was originally to finish this yesterday on Monday it's currently Tuesday but it got to, what was it, like two or three in the afternoon yesterday and I knew I could finish the sleeve because I did the first one in a day. But then I kind of just looked at my other projects and other things I wanted to do, not just knitting related stuff but other things around the house. And I went, you know what, even if I don't finish it today, I can finish it tomorrow, I can finish it the day after. Yes, I'd like it ready for my podcast, but there's other things I'm currently waiting on. There's two orders, I think, I'm hoping to get tomorrow. So I might be able to film tomorrow, otherwise I'll film... Worst case scenario, film on Saturday. That's fine. So I'm trying not to feel too rushed. And I really did enjoy... The kind of color work once I got over the first kind of bit of it and I quite enjoyed the body surprisingly and it went quite quickly but it's just with these sleeves that I started to feel a bit of pressure not really pressure just kind of wanted to get it done and be done because I could see how close I was and once again this is the problem when I'm so used to doing the sleeves first so when I do the ribbing for the body I'm used to them being able to try it on and see that it fits okay but it just didn't work with the helical knitting I think I've talked about that already but we're getting there very very close and then I'll try it on maybe weave in the ends today but I'm not doing that straight away I want to put this to the side and kind of just let it sit and then my next focus has to be the foxtail socks because I want to get those done and send them to Georgie from the Fiber Fox whose yarn I'm using for them and I've still been working a bit on my Ito shawl I've tried not to like I mentioned in my last podcast episode I've really tried not to work on it because it's not the project I'm meant to be working on but it's just nice in the evenings when I want to do something because the lace pattern that I'm up to I think I've talked about this before as well but it's one where you can easily remember there are a couple of stitch repeat whereas something like the Nobu shawl oh it's just there's no break from it but my mum's currently working on one as well and I was helping her out just the other day because she was having issues with her with a few bits in the pattern and I was like yep I struggled with that too and I figured it out on the second half or I figured it out later on so I shared that wisdom which in some ways I guess I can't remember how much of that I actually did in the podcast but I might try and actually talk about that in my next one to make sure that anyone else who wants to knit this hears that in case they might have issues and I think I might also try and write something for Ravelry for when it's done. I'm, I'm being a bit more active on Ravelry now because it's really helped me reading people's notes for different projects and I was like well if it's helping me why am I not 
doing that for other people. Obviously, I'm a bit conflicted because there's still issues with rivalry. It's been... Has it been getting worse? Is that a fair thing to say? Or has it just been as bad as it's always been? Who knows? But it is still a useful platform and there isn't really anything that's as good or anything that even slightly compares to what you can do. Which isn't okay. I think it would be useful. (laughs) There's something to be said though about everyone knowing that one place to go to but that's why I feel like Ravelry really needs to step it up and you know there's things you can do to be as inclusive as possible the biggest thing is always when someone says hey that's not fair that's potential discrimination and you need you should potentially change this because you're discriminating people and all these things just listen and then You know, if your team can't handle it, hire a specialist, get some help, get some support, but don't just dismiss it and say, yeah, but everyone else who tested our website said it was fine. I think it's always so important how not just like corporations, companies, but also just people in general handle things. We make mistakes. That is fine. It's about how you then handle that situation. And instead of trying to explain Well, here are all the reasons why I did the thing and I didn't mean to, you know, cause any harm. Cool, but you did. So how about instead of trying to justify why you did what you did, show you're actually sorry by really apologizing and really meaning it. And then, you know, maybe the person that you hurt later on kind of wants to have a conversation to understand it better. And then, you know, maybe you can talk about all the things that fit into it. But at the end of the day, you did something wrong. Apologize it. And figure out how to kind of, you know, do better next time. It's just something that's been on my mind with a lot of things. But And this is what I like about knitting. I like that it starts to... Because it's quite a mindful, or can be a very mindful thing. When I really take the time to just sit and knit and not necessarily watch something or listen to something but just sit then all these thoughts and feelings start to come up and it gives me a way of being able to cope and deal with them more like one at a time instead of any other time when I'm feeling overwhelmed with emotions and other things in the world that I feel bombarded and overwhelmed and can't deal with all of it. But with my knitting, it's only ever really like one thing that comes in and I think about it and I can just process it much better. That's me. But this is why I like focusing on process knitting where it's not about what I get out at the end. It's literally about having that time to sit down do something with my hands and then there's extra benefits and stuff from having something at the end and seeing myself produce something but it's the act of sitting down and really doing this that's really beneficial for me so I think I need to count soon I'm definitely above an inch now but I'll my plan is to make another video I was kind of talking about this a bit I think in the clip I filmed yesterday but I've kind of decided now that I'm pretty much done already I have now kind of thought about it a bit more and I do want to make one more video where probably I'm not sure if I will include clips of me blocking and weaving in ends because I'm not sure anyone wants to see that but more of like a podcast style episode so I'll actually sit in the proper place where I do my podcast and talk through everything beginning to end kind of my final thoughts a final wrap up if you will that's the plan and we'll see when that happens i'm just going to quickly count my ripping stitches now okay we did 13 i actually remember that because i was like oh is that unlucky (laughs) And I've done 10 so far. Ooh, really not long to go now. 
I did a, this is something you have been doing. I don't know if you saw as I was just holding up the other cuff that it was quite stretchy and loose. So normally when a pattern says bind off loosely, I typically will use for the right hand needle. So the one that's actually, you know, gauge determining, I use a sized up needle and that, and try and do it relatively loosely. And then I'm like, that's loose, but it still causes the ribbing to be, to not have that much stretch. And so I recently kind of tried, I can't even remember for which one I did it first. There was a pattern I was working on and it said to use a specific stretchy cast off. And I was like, I've never done it. You know what? Let's try it. Let's see how it goes. And I couldn't believe how stretchy it was. And then kind of thought about doing it on most things now because well, normally I don't like too much of a stretchy ribbon because then it doesn't really go back and I like the fact that ribbing contracts but it means since I'm the sort of person who pretty much always rolls up their sleeves like right now not having my sleeves rolled up feels really weird I almost feel claustrophobic from it it's bizarre totally a psychological thing um, if I don't think about it it's fine it's sort of like the whole thing you see jokes about when the brain becomes aware of the nose and you start to kind of feel really weird and if you don't know what I'm talking about that's going to sound really bizarre but it is a thing what a thing to get sidetracked on anyway and so it is quite loose and I'm not sure I don't know I think I want something sort of in between not that stretchy but stretchier than what I've done in the past because the first and only, I don't know why I said the first, the love note that I've made, the bind off I did at the sleeves is way too tight. So it makes it really uncomfortable to wear. And I'd hoped it would block out a bit. I'd hoped it would stretch out a bit and it's just not really. But part of the reason it's not stretching out is because I never really wear it because it's so uncomfortable. I think I still have some of the mohair left, but I don't have any of the fingering weight yarn left. I did have a decent chunk left, but I think I ended up using that on my scrappy blanket already. So I could have gone back and kind of, you know, done it again. Could have also gone full length sleeve, but I think I went for what the pattern said because I don't know. I feel like I was still quite a new knitter at that point. But kind of speaking of being like a new Anito or whatever, someone tagged me in something that was going around on Instagram about where well, you just filled out like, how many years have you been knitting? How many projects do you have? What's the size of your yarn stash? And I was really surprised when I sat down and actually thought, when did I start knitting properly? Like I learned it when I was a teenager, maybe even a kid. But for me, my knitting journey and properly learning didn't start until, what was it, March, April, 2019. It's when I went, I've told this story sort of on my podcast before, I think it was my first episode, that I went to Oslo with my parents. My dad was going for work, mum was joining him, and so they asked, do you want to join us as well? I think it was only for a week, maybe less. And I was like, sure thing. And... Mum was on the hunt for some wool because it's really hard to find in Dubai. And I kind of just saw some, it was a chunky, super chunky yarn. It was thick. And I was like, the color, the feel of it, like, this is amazing. Then it had a cowl pattern that came for free that you could just download. It was Katya wool. And I was like, I think I want this. And then I think mum also bought me the knitting needles to go with it, the two skeins, balls of yarn that I needed. And I think I did that in an afternoon once I got back to York at one point. And I loved it so much. And weirdly enough, I think I then kind of had already been looking at some kits from like Wall and the Gang and stuff. But a friend of mine um, who I went to visit once I came back and had made this, 
and walked into his place and he kind of asked me how it all was and then I kind of like the trip how the trip was and I kind of showed off this cow and he looked at me and he didn't tell me this until later but he said I hope you're gonna keep knitting because I haven't seen you that happy and proud of anything you've done in a really long time and that was a huge wake-up call for me and I think I did but it was kind of after hearing it that I realized how happy it was making me and really got into knitting. So it was just nice to get some uh, reassurance, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Like my mum's encouraged me, but I think she's always felt a bit like she didn't want to push it on me. And now I feel like I'm pushing it on her. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, can you knit this? You should knit this. But we enable each other now. One more, and then I'm binding off. So the bind off that I'm doing, I cannot remember the name, but it's one where instead of just knitting to, like knitting a stitch, passing it over, passing the previous one over the next one, you do a kind of reverse yarn over. So just wrapping the yarn around the needle the other way to how you would normally do it for a yarn over and then you pass that over the stitch which just creates a bit more stretchiness and I'll show it off so you can just kind of see it's already sitting a lot more open but when I stretch it it like really stretches which means you can actually you know like get it over the elbow comfortably but I think I also did it for the, I did, for the bodding, botting, for the body. Um, just because there's nothing worse than if you've knitted a jumper with like beautiful positive ease and it's super roomy and cozy and comfy, but you've done the ribbing a little too tight and then it cinches in there. Um, I'm probably not gonna do the cast off on camera. I say probably, I'm not going to do it because I, I think with a cast off I need to concentrate just a little bit more than with this and I don't want to screw that up so that's it dark water sweater is pretty much oh 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 I'm on the last few stitches as well so one second and I'll just have to do the cast off I can't believe I knitted this so quickly and I, I wasn't even like monogamous knitting because I was always working on something else every day as well. I'm quite happy with this. It did help that it was Easter and this is mainly what I did. And even when I was talking to people, I was knitting. That's it. Let's just recount <laughs> because I don't trust myself. Yeah, cast off time. Oh, wow. Does anyone else ever have that feeling when you've really been working on something? And this is something I've wanted to make since the end of 2019. Well, actually earlier than that, but I've had the yarn, ordered the yarn at the end of 2019, got it at the beginning of 2020. Um, I can't believe it. I can't believe it's done. Well, I still need to do the cast off, but <laughs> it's so beautiful. <sighs> I sort of want to wear it today, but the color work needs blocking. There's a few areas um, that I just need to sort out. And just for reference, I'll share it in the podcast anyway. My hair's just all over it. Can you see, ooh, bit of lag, this clip here? That marker is where I was up to during my last podcast episode, which was slightly more than a week ago. So I film, did I film it on Saturday? Yeah, I filmed it on Saturday, and it's now a week after Tuesday. That's a lot of knitting. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go cast off that sleeve. Go get myself a drink of water. Maybe do something else for a while, and then come back and work on some other projects. I can't wait. I have a spreadsheet. I can't wait to fill that out and change that sta status status for um, what I'm currently up to with my progress as done. Just needs blocking. Yee, so exciting. 
thank you for watching and like i said the next dark water sweater will just be a kind of roundup roundup yes roundup where i'll be wearing the sweater and talking about a few bits just kind of things about a pattern and sort of i guess things that you would find maybe in a ravelry um project page just kind of some information about talking about again about the yarn i used how does it work with the pattern have I made any modifications? What do I think about the pattern in general? Things like that. But yeah, thank you for watching.